Sometimes a game has all the right ideas, but just enough flaws to keep it from greatness. Sometimes the main problems don't lie in the overall design, or the vision, or the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. They lie in the little errors, the small problems, each individually insubstantial, but when put together, form an unavoidable mass. Crashes, badly explained systems, garish cosmetics, lag, audio issues, feature creep, lack of coherence between gameplay aesthetics, it's death by a thousand cuts. And I feel that's what's happened to Vindictus. Vindictus is what would happen if Guild Wars 1 and Terror had a steamy night of passion, then left the baby to be raised by wolves. It's a hub-based, instanced mission game with consistent story and replayable levels like Guild Wars 1, with the action combat and over-the-top Eastern style of Terror, and that should make it something I love because I love both those games. And while I do love it, to a degree, there's just enough wrong with it that it never quite takes off. It's like an old friend who's fun to hang around with now and again, but every so often they ditch you on the bad side of town or steal your phone to order Uber Eats with your money. Vindictus is a bunch of great ideas poorly executed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO content. Ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. More on how you can support at the end. For now, Let's begin. Today we are playing Vindictus. This has been one of the most recommended games to me, so it's on Steam and it's free, so let's give it a go. Steam describes it as unlike any MMO you've experienced, which is a bold claim, because if you're up to date with the worst MMO series, you know that you and I have experienced quite a few things. Vindictus is published by Nexon, a Japanese-Korean company also responsible for Mabinogi and Maple Story. Don't worry, we'll be getting to those eventually. The first thing I do is change the graphics to see how the client can handle a basic technical request. It handles it by needing to be restarted, which is fine, but on restart automatically launches a browser window opened to an unsecure web page asking for a review. All I did was change the resolution, and you accessed an unsecured internet page and asked for a review of the game. This is the first example of death by a thousand cuts we're about to experience. This is a terrible security flaw. Not a great start. Character selection. Vindictus is a combat-focused, class-based game, and each character is nicely narrated. You get a bit of backstory, a nice little intro animation, traditional over-the-top Eastern-inspired weapons. Except Ira, who seems to be using nerf guns. I'll go with Kale, a knight who uses a sword staff. Then we get to move some sliders around, and despite having a lot of sliders, you can't actually change things that substantially. Plus, there's a warning which reads, certain animations may not display properly if you change the character too much, so I'll stick with the default. Now to name my character, and another annoyance. There are naming rules, no spaces, limits of 12 characters, but they don't tell you the rules until after you've tried to name the character, and they still let you type whatever you like. Please, developers, if you have naming limitations, include those limitations in what the text box will actually accept. Now the intro begins. We are a noble knight who feels sympathy for the commoners, and we join a rebellion, but then we're caught between our own royal bloodline wanting to go to war and the common spirit wanting justice, and it's all very dramatic. It's told through text and the occasional picture, and honestly, this does not matter at all. This is just fluff. It's a nice story, but not relevant in any way. So now the prologue begins. We see a huge spider climbing up a clock tower. Some knights attack it, then the game begins, and we don't have any sound. There's no audio. I mean, the gameplay is nice. Move, WASD, spacebar dodge, shift run, left click attack. You can break the environment. Things look and feel nice. I'm kind of getting the feel of Dark Souls 3, but slightly more basic. But this silence is upsetting me. So let's restart and see if we can get the audio working. Restart the game, log into the same character, and now we are in some sort of inn. Okay, I think I know what's happened here. I'm going to guess the intro segment was a tutorial, and by quitting during it, the game has just skipped me ahead. Okay. Let's restart again, make a brand new but identical character, and hope the intro actually works with sound this time. And it does! And behold, voice acting. Get it together, rookie! I mean, it's not 
terrible. So the spider is the town's guardian and it's attacking the bell tower because it's evil now, so we go and stop it. This woman is the oracle. Notice how our sword spear weapon is so long it clips through the wall into the cutscene. Just thought that was kind of funny. Inside the tower we are ambushed and the combat begins. Vindictus is an action combat game. The first few minutes actually remind me of Dark Souls 3. The smaller encounter sizes, the combo of moves, the destructible environments, this isn't a bad opening. Attacks are satisfying, nice impacts, good heavy sound effects, nice enemy animations, left click chains offensive moves together, and right click is a defensive move, which still does some damage. This is decent. Eventually the girl gets injured and we carry her. You can still attack while carrying, but you're limited to a kick. The environment outside the tower looks great. I'm having a decent time so far. And then we get to the top of the tower and we fight the spider and this is where things start to go south and feel not complete. During the spider fight, I get told to press 1 and 2 to use my abilities, but I've not been told what those abilities are or what they do or when I should use them or what resources they use up. Also, it seems I can just spam left click and be fine. There's no real strategy needed here. Eventually, the spider climbs the tower and then gets shot down by some ballistas and the bell crashes onto it, killing it, which is actually a really nice use of scenery to affect battle. Then a cutscene shows all of this has been watched by some random lizard dude who I'm sure will be relevant later, and now we wake up in the inn. The game now asks if we want to reselect a hero or carry on. I really like this choice. It's like you get a five minute tester of what a class is like before you commit to playing it. So now we are in town and I discover a system I like so much I want it to be in every MMO ever. Holding Alt unlocks the cursor, but it also brings up this ring around your character with all of the major locations and points of interest in the town pointed to by arrows. This is an absolutely fantastic navigation technique within a 3D environment. It's unobtrusive and it's easy to read and follow. The game now directs us to this building, a mercenary headquarters, and we get talking. And I actually quite like how the game handles conversations, even though it's a little bit different to what you're probably expecting. Dialogue screens are simply a slow panning image of the location or room you are in, and all the NPCs present are listed at the bottom left with small icons. Clicking an NPC's face lets you talk to them. It's simple but very effective. It's reminiscent of choosing dialogue options in old point-and-click games like Broken Sword. You can't see the models of the NPCs in the world, but they do have drawn avatars when talking to you. Vindictus is also a game with a great deal of reading, and I don't mind reading as long as what I am reading is relevant. Unfortunately, as we'll see later, it really isn't. Quests in the game are broken down into stories, and each storyline has major events that you play through, then you can go back and replay those encounters with increased difficulty later. Pressing H brings up the area map. It's a very old-school RPG vibe going on. So far, Vindictus feels like an amalgamation of various design choices from various styles of game. Action combat, RPG interface, point-and-click dialogue. It's not that it doesn't work, it just feels disjointed. We are now sent to the docks to access the battle board. This is the main travel hub. From here, you choose which location to go to and which encounter or mission to play at that location. If you're just following the story, there's also a handy story progression button which will send you where you need to go. Each battle can have enhancers added on once you are a higher level, so you can grind one level again and again and again for resources, kind of like Warframe. So I go to the first mission, and this is what Vindictus really is. It's not an open world MMO. It's an online RPG with multiplayer elements and instance locations you travel to, kind of like Guild Wars 1. Each level is short and linear. You kill the enemies to progress, and that's pretty much it. I opens the inventory. You can see your equipped weapons with a little E highlighted in the corner. Equipped items remain in your inventory, taking up inventory space, so management is going to matter later. I also discover you can pick up most of the objects in the actual level and smack enemies around with them. Not sure why you'd want to do this when your regular weapon is better, but hey, whatever floats your boat. You can also press G to see each level's extra objectives, like kill five enemies with a spear. Completing these gets you bonus rewards, another comparison to Guild Wars 1. Now we get shown bombs and spears, secondary weapons we can pick up and use while in missions. Throwing a spear can knock an enemy down, but the camera follows the path of the spear and your character is rooted for the throw duration, so not the best tactical choice for a melee fighter, at least not solo. Fight your way to the final room and then face a boss, win by spamming left click. And when you land the killing blow, the game goes into slow-mo mode and you get this multi-angle camera switch. Now the angle the camera chooses is seemingly random because it can clip under the floor or choose a similar angle multiple times in a row, making this quite a jarring moment. 
collect all of the dropped loot from the boss, and then a pop-up window asks if we want to return to town. I suppose I do. Chat to the mercenary people some more, get told about skills, press V to open the skills list, upgrade skills with gold, and then AP, or action points, gain AP by doing missions. Each skill has a nice little video showing what it does and what button you need to click to activate it. However, the numbers, such as damage, cooldown, or range, aren't easy to find, so good system with some deeper information missing. And that's basically the game. Finishing missions grants you resources you'll use to level up items and equipment and skills, so go and grind. It's fantasy Warframe, and I should love that, because I love fantasy and I love Warframe, so I'm on board with this idea, let's go and do it. However, just like Warframe, once you're a few minutes in, it gets somewhat overwhelming. I've gained loads of resources, I don't yet quite understand how they relate to each other, and I've already seen a load of systems mentioned and not been trained on them. Vindictus is a game which does indeed contain a lot of good stuff, but the journey a new player goes on isn't smooth enough to really retain mainstream casual appeal. Back into some missions, kill some spiders, then break these bridge supports to lower the bridge. So combat does have use in environmental puzzle solving. I really like that. The levels themselves are short and simple. It feels very PlayStation 2 adventure game in a charming way. The simple textures and straight line level layouts. The bosses, however, are somewhat disappointing. Mechanically, they're not really that much different to a mob enemy, but with much more health. More story, get told to level up some skills, then a pop-up tells me I can learn all the skills eventually, so order I gain them in doesn't really matter. Vindictus at this point feels fun, but flawed. It's the lack of polish I'm noticing. The NPC avatar images not having the same graphical style as the UI. The skill menu being somewhat messy. The audio randomly cutting out every now and again. The game is no doubt enjoyable, and I can see the quality, but there is a definite rough around the edges feeling to it. Take this Knoll necklace to a jewellery shop and level up, complete with intrusive level goal overlay pop-up where you get gifts and presents and prizes just for playing. This is such a stark contrast to the classic RPG vibe I was getting earlier. Are you going for dark, serious, story-focused RPG or light-hearted, flashy boss grinder? Each system or design choice isn't individually bad, but Vindictus doesn't feel completely coherent with all of its aesthetics. The plot goes on about some Null attack and some Formorian emblems being discovered and how the Nulls and giant spiders might be working together. All of this means go and run through some more linear combat sections and left click a lot. Oh, there are now traps. Maybe they'll add in an element of platforming and avoidance based gameplay, but nope, no, you can tank trap damage fine. Nothing to worry about here. Fight this boss and get the option to continue the storyline directly from the level with no need to return to town, so now town itself is becoming redundant. Also, I feel I should mention I'm playing the game in December, hence the Christmas outfits on the NPCs. This is seasonal design. They don't just really love Santa. Now we're given a load of plot, items, weapons, armour and skills all at once. We are showered in upgrades and advancements and we're not really given a chance to process it all before we're thrown into more gameplay. And the gameplay of Vindictus is really enjoyable. The combat system is great. The main problem with the gameplay is the lacklustre way of linking the combat sections together and the somewhat slapdash feeling of all the connecting systems and the gameplay outside of these combat encounters. I've also just started to speed read the plot when I realised no matter what the NPCs tell me, the answer is always go and kill some nameless grunts and then a disappointing boss in a small linear level. There's mining in the game too, and you mine by throwing bombs at resource rocks. I'm sure this ore will come in useful if the game ever bothers to explain crafting. First time we need to climb, press E to scramble up a cliff. I don't know why this is here. Having vertical elements to a level only matters if being above or below something is relevant for gameplay or story reasons, or a level has multiple layers. But this is just a cliff for the sake of a cliff. I like the fact it's got climbing, I dislike the fact they haven't actually used climbing in any relevant way when they've introduced it to you. And ironically, directly after the cliff, they have an archer tower shooting you from above, and you already know you need to kill all the enemies to advance from zone to zone, so good game design would have the tower be indestructible from the bottom and require climbing to reach the enemy on top, thus combining the climbing mechanic we've just discovered and the elevated enemy we know we need to kill. But no, you can just destroy the tower by hitting it from the bottom. Reach the boss and... Hang on, I know this map. This arena is the same as the last mission. I've only been playing for two hours and we are reusing maps already, oh dear. Kill the boss, laugh at the cinematic camera glitching underground and then return to town. Oh, the game has titles, but here's a very nice touch. 
Every title you earn grants bonuses, but you gain the bonuses even if you aren't displaying the title, and they all stack. This is a great way to do this. Passive buffs from following the story, and then your title choice is cosmetic, not mechanical. I have noticed that the loading screens between areas are also overly sexy. I'm kind of hoping Vindictus hasn't fallen into the less content, more cleavage design trap, but I'm worried it might have done. So let's talk about the combat, because when people try to sell me Vindictus, they sell me the amazing, complex, deep, responsive, fast, engaging combat system, and I need to be honest with you. It does look nice, and it does feel nice, and it does control nice, but for my entire 8 hour play, I only ever needed to left click. I threw in some dodges and abilities for good measure, and I drank a potion or two, but... 8 hours, I could have spam left click and just won. Now, if your combat system gets better, that's fine, but please understand, if this is the experience most players will come away with, you're not really impressing anyone. If Vindictus truly does have the complex combat people keep going on about, maybe consider, I don't know, making use of it within the first few fights. Earlier I said this game reminded me of Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is a game which, within the first hour or two, already has you in incredibly complicated fights that require you to understand the system. Vindictus looks nice and it controls nice, but it's not exactly challenging or engaging for the first eight hours. You don't need to understand what you're doing to win. And because of this, most new players won't ever bother learning to understand what they're doing. Eventually, I finish the Null storyline by beating the final boss, and I discover now I don't even need to manually walk to the NPCs to chat to them or hand in quests. You can start all dialogue and travel by clicking the quest list on the right-hand side of the screen. So Vindictus isn't really a world. It's a vehicle for levels to be connected together. So while I'm progressing, let's just have a read of some reviews and see what other people think. Oh, you added a warrior priestess with a Japanese-style single-edged sword and scabbard, and you named it Dana. Fantastic. Tell me, did you ever fix that copy-paste level design? Or how camera decides to play paparazzi when you complete a mission? Very interesting indeed. Super fun gameplay, although I've skipped the story for the most part. If your goal is to get into a game for its toughness versus bosses, then this is the game for you. The only real reason that's stopping you from beating the boss is you. This game has easy early game, and I mean like a five-year-old could beat it, but once you arrive at the halfway point in Season 3, that's when the game starts to change. If your goal is to fight bosses and kick ass, then you need to be willing to put a few hours into learning the game before you get there. And that's what the game does until the end of Season 3. This game is great, and I freaking love it. This game is one of the only games where it 100% takes my focus from everything around me. I would say that's a great game, in my opinion. Old, badly optimised, boring, grindy, pricey, and unnecessarily sexual for a combat game. What a waste of good idea and unlimited potential. But sadly, there aren't really any better alternatives out there. Real-time action, PvE, MMO, Souls-like. I guess the hardest part is to nail the network latency to sync enemy mechanics and iframes. I was a player on West Server that has now quit the game entirely. I have experienced the game from 1 to 80, and currently have a level 80 character, as long as 60 to 70 for most other characters, so all of what I have to say is from experience. Pros. Combat is engaging and skill-based. Engine can be funny at times. Cons. Nexon is a terrible company. The community is full of trolls and elitists. Economy fluctuates rapidly without rhyme or reason. Pay to win. Unbalanced classes. Early endgame is intimidating and unrewarding. Progression becomes incredibly difficult. Like others, I have very mixed feelings about the game. I have really enjoyed it, and getting my first character to max level at least seemed somewhat rewarding, but once you get to endgame, you realise that the whole things is just a massive grindfest. Pay to win. You will spend countless, and I mean countless hours, grinding for gold or materials for armour and weapons, etc., and soon realise that it is futile. Your weapons permanently break when trying to enhance or enchant them, unless you pay a ridiculous amount of money for protection. It costs $20 simply to protect your weapon when enchanting. Mind you, that is only good for one enchant. If it fails, you still have your weapon but you have to pay another $20 just to attempt an enchant again. Have a chat to this strange traveller. This isn't the main storyline. Thankfully, the side quests are easy to tell apart, so you don't get your paths muddled too much. Then I get sent to fix a broken sword at this forge, which means going to the forge, seeing a lovely new backdrop, and talking to more NPCs using the click system. Honestly, it's unusual, but it's not bad. Then another glitch. I get told about the travel menu. I press G to open it, and it doesn't open. But the tutorial continues, and we get this ghostly overlay which is meant to be breaking down the travel menu layout, but instead is just on the screen. Another example of the lack of polish. 
Thankfully, when I can open the travel menu later, it's not difficult to figure out. More flaws. Look at the text inside the conversation response dialog box. It spills out of the box bounds underneath a graphic. Small things like this make the game look amateur. So there's no actual need to travel to NPCs because you can accept all quests and drive the story from clicking on the UI. And now there's no need to travel to the docks to access the battle board. In fact, you can play Vindictus while standing completely still. Every system you need can be accessed from the UI. There's no actual need for this 3D village at all. If the levels are the content and the hub is just a prep area, it could just be one big menu screen. There's no reason to explore. Now we are heading into the icy caverns, and I do like how you can see your character's breath in the cold. That's a lovely graphical touch. Fight some ice goblins, and I was really hoping for a difficulty spike, but no, there's nothing new. But what annoys me the most is how the change in location isn't bringing anything new to the game mechanically. The ice caverns are, gameplay-wise, just a reskin. There's nothing to actually make the level feel different to the destroyed temples. Both aesthetics are just corridors leading to open rooms with big battles. The temples didn't have levers or puzzles or different routes or hidden corridors. The ice caves didn't have icy patches or cave-ins or snowdrifts. Vindictus is mechanically extremely samey. It's not so much a fantasy world as it is just a level-based repetitive fighting game. Look, we even get a drop-down section, but no reason for it to exist. It's a vertical change for no reason. It's like the devs knew that video games had to have vertical aspects to them, but didn't know why. Verticality in MMOs is a big enough topic to be an entire video, so I can't get into it too much here. Let's take a step back and just have a look at the games I've compared Vindictus to so far and see why it's not living up to them. The hub areas and mission-based gameplay of Guild Wars 1, the fantasy action combat of Terror, the level select and resource gathering of Warframe, the conversation mechanics of Broken Sword, and a classic RPG feel. Vindictus can be compared to lots of really good games, but despite having several good systems, it doesn't feel finished. The combat is fluid and has complexity, but it's not challenging enough to need you to understand it or experience it. The levels are nice to look at, but they're not deep to go and explore a game. The story is there, but it's not connected to the gameplay. You can't bring along NPCs, you can't go and take on named enemies that you've built up a rapport with. The RPG elements are present, such as equipping new items or weapons, but they're not fleshed out enough to actually change the feeling of the game to a substantial degree. You don't notice when you are wearing better armor because you weren't dying before and you're not dying now. You don't notice when you equip a new weapon because you were doing fine before and you're still doing fine. Playing Vindictus is like watching a really good amateur dramatic performance. Yes, it's decent, but it's just not got that professional level of polish that you find on Broadway or in the West End. So how's the cash shop look? Because honestly, it's not been pushed on me, which is nice. So let's see what we can find here. Ah, right. This is probably why it isn't pushed, because when you look at it, your opinion will begin to sour. Vindictus is a Nexon game, so of course it's pay for mechanical advantage. You can buy megaphones to talk on the server, and whenever I see megaphones, that's a sign a game might be a little greedy. Then I see enchantment runes, which prevent an item breaking during a failed upgrade, which lets me know there's an upgrade system, it can sometimes fail, and you're going to be buying a lot of these if you want to fully upgrade stuff. Goddess Grace. Instantly get back up at full health. Wow. So death in missions, the only mechanical stopping moment, can be circumvented if you have enough money. Like putting another coin into an arcade machine. You can even get mass goddess grace for the rest of your team. One personal goddess grace costs 300 NX, and you can buy 1000 NX for one dollar. That's a nice easy conversion rate, but look, you don't even get a discount if you buy more. So with Goddess Grace, that's just 30 cents to get back up and not die in any mission. So what's the most expensive thing I can find? Thankfully, it's not crazy. There's a dye pack for $34, or some pets which help you by attacking enemies or making your mining better, or a monthly VIP system. Or even better, a VVIP system. Very, very important person. I'm not even making that up. 30 days of VVIP will increase your experience, action point gain, and give you extra daily raid runs, and will only cost you, regular price, $28 a month. It's on sale right now, but wow. $28 a month for a monthly optional sub seems a little bit steep. You can pay $11.90 for 90 days of increased bank storage, or $11.90 for a single armor enhancement rune, guaranteeing the armor upgrades from plus 9 to plus 10, or plus 10 to plus 11. That means there is a minimum of plus 11 in the game. 
How long do you think it's going to take you to get all of your armour to there? For three dollars, you can just straight up buy 1,000 action points to improve your skills. That is the most blatant example of buying power I can find in the shop. Give us money, you can upgrade your skills. $2.90 gets you a 7 day 70 to 90 armour contract, allowing you, and bear with me, to wear all items within that level range, provided you are within that level range. So hang on, does that mean if you're level 70 and you purchase this contract, you can equip level 90 armour, and this works in PvP? What the hell? I leave the shop because it's making me sad, and oh, if you press K, you can open the quick battle system. It's basically the battle board from the docks, but anywhere. Vindictus truly is a hub-based UI game. Also for this quest, nice little easter egg I noticed, they've used the image of Einstein sticking his tongue out as a character reference. So I set off to do this mission, and the game crashes. Fantastic. I'm actually amazed that a crash has taken this long, given all the other small issues we've found. Vindictus isn't a bad game, it's just a neglected game which hasn't dotted the I's or crossed the T's. It's made up of some conflicting design ideas which just haven't married together very well. If you want me to care about your characters and world, don't make exploring it via the in-game village irrelevant when you've got a travel anywhere system. Honestly, Vindictus feels like going to a decent restaurant, and the food is okay, but Everything else is just off. The floor is sticky, the music is skipping, the lights are either too bright or too dim, the window is open so it's drafty, the chef is a little bit late, the drinks are a bit warm. Nothing individually is enough to make you leave, but when combined, it doesn't make you want to stay. I feel in trying to streamline the process of playing the game, they've removed the emotional connection to that process. One level feels exactly the same as another. Enjoyable, but vapid. It's closer to Dynasty Warriors. Mindless hack and slash fun. Not RPG material. I finish a mission and get more unlocks and more upgrades, and by now I'm just feeling a little overwhelmed with ephemera and lacking in actual coherent direction. Look, a hub-based game means you don't have to build a consistent world. This leaves you free to create a tight narrative and build up emotional connections to peoples and places, like Guild Wars 1. And having short missions means you can focus on making them intensely fun with tightly designed corridors, open spaces, or vertical sections with multiple routes to success, like Warframe. And having action combat means you can build up big battles and big bosses with lots of mechanics that test your reaction time, like Terra. You've got all of these elements, but you've not actually focused on any of them. At the end of this mission, I get swarmed by bosses, and I'm actually starting to struggle, and now I'm enjoying it, because finally I am not too powerful to just steamroll everything. Gameplay is now happening. Here we go. This is the moment I start to have fun. And then I unlock a new power, transform into a super OP godlike mode, and just return to left click spamming. You were so close, game. You were so close to finding the correct difficulty curve, but then you were so worried that that challenge might put players off, you've given them an I win ability and forced them to use it. Shame. Back in the main hub, I see some of the cosmetics and, ah, uh, yes, I guess they did go down the cleavage over content route. Double shame. So Vindictus, it's got elements of many great games within, and it has callbacks and feelings that make you think of other better games, but none of them fleshed out enough to call it the focus of this game. It's got touches of quality buried under a plethora of smaller mistakes. It's got all the things a game needs without really playing to the strengths of what having those things actually means or allows you to do. It's a decent free MMO. It's got nice visuals when they're not clipping through cutscenes, audio is fine when it works, the levels are linear but short and somewhat fun. It's not offensively bad, it's just not impressively good either. So, to end the review, I would award Vindictus, the disappointing abandoned love child of Guild Wars 1 and Terra, out of 10. Cheers for watching. Another massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and the second channel Josh Drive Plays, where I review old video games voted on by you. And as always, have a great day.